Hello, it's uh, Father Tom Hoare again, and I've invited Father Mike Najem to uh, join us for a little conversation about Lent. Uh, it'll be coming uh, up uh, next week. Father Mike is the pastor of St. Pius X uh, Parish in Westerly, Rhode Island, uh, and I've known him since he was a uh, young seminarian, and I've watched him gray uh, over, over the years, and he is uh, beloved in it in Westerly and in his parish, it's his hometown. Um, and I've had the opportunity to preach um, many times at uh, St. Pius and even to do a Lenten uh, mission. And that's something that uh, has been very common in the past, but I suspect with Colbert, uh, or COVID, uh, there probably won't be a lot of parish missions taking place in person. Yeah, I think, you know, last year w w we had to cancel our mission yeah. uh, because everything started shutting down. We, we canceled the week before everything officially got shut down because we saw it was coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have nothing planned this year, although, the, you know, the good thing about COVID is it's allowed parishes to become more creative, right. <laughs> you know. Uh, so I think um, a lot of virtual things have been going on, which is good. But I think, you know, there's nothing wrong for um, parishes even to do their own mission. I mean, the, the, the tradition is always to have somebody from the outside come in. Right. But I think this is a good opportunity for parishes to maybe become a little more creative. And to um, help people to really come to a, a deeper understanding of what uh, it means to celebrate Lent as a parish. You know, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And, and they can take many different forms. Right. Um, I, yeah, I think th th that's a great point about the, that there should be a, a communal aspect to Lent. I think oftentimes uh, we think of Lent as, as a, just an individual journey, you know, where I'm, I'm doing my own sacrifices and, and penances and almsgivings. But I think uh, for parishes to be able to say, why not for a great thing for parishes to do a communal penance or something? You know, what, mm -hmm. how about uh, one parish deciding that, you know, this will be our sacrifice for the season of Lent. Uh, obviously, we support, you know, parishioners can support their parish, but why not consider a, a parish almsgiving project, you know, where you're supporting a particular, uh, what, it could be anything in like the community. Like a nonprofit uh, uh, retreat center. Like a nonprofit retreat center, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, but I think that's a great point, Father Tom, is like th th that it, Lent is an individual journey, but it's also a parish journey. And I think it's a great opportunity to, to think of, uh, as community. Yeah. Here at uh, Enders in, the, in our community, we don't have dessert uh, from, yeah. uh, from Ash Wednesday until uh, uh, Easter Sunday. And you know, sometimes people say, well, like, why? You know, because that's our community uh, sacrifice. Right. And, and I think that element is really, uh, can be a powerful element to help bind the community together in that common journey of uh, spiritual renewal, um, of reconciliation, uh, of healing, mm -hmm. uh, and, and preparing us really to embrace uh, the, the story of the passion and resurrection of Christ. Yeah, and Lent, I think, and you just mentioned a key word about reconciliation, you know, and I, there's the, the, um, the uh, act of, um, not the act of contrition, but the penitential act at the beginning of the Mass. Um, I think, I don't know if it's in the new form, uh, I know it was part of the older form where, where the priest said, you have come to reconcile us uh, to one another, to the Father and to one another. I'm paraphrasing, right. but um, that when we are reconciled, it's not just about being reconciled to the Lord, right. it's about being reconciled to one another and as God's community, family. I mean, church. that's what happens when we go to confession. I go to confession, I'm reconciled to God, but I'm also reconciled to the community. Right. And so I think uh, uh, Lent is a great time to reflect upon that, that whole idea of communal reconciliation. And I think, I think especially like in our day and age, in our culture, in our country, where we've seen s so much fraction and division, yeah. it's a great time to focus on that whole idea of community reconciliation. Yeah. And even um, uh, a community uh, penance as far as like on one night a week, asking everyone whether they're in the church or in their homes, to, uh, to join in praying the Divine Mercy Chapel yeah. or the Rosary, or something where they know that they are praying with the whole uh, parish community. Right. And, and, and that's one of the things that we try to uh, help people uh, develop is a, is a deeper understanding of uh, what prayer, fasting, and almsgiving can mean 
for us individually, but also for us as a community. We're, we have uh, uh, a, a program uh, this um, uh, Lent that we're going to be offering online. Uh, Brother Anthony, who is a Benedictine monk, uh, who uh, comes and stays with us from time to time, he's done a reflection. I think it's five reflections that we're going to have available on prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, and the uh, spiritual traditions of Lent. And Father Dick Mahalik um, is going to be uh, uh, offering a reflection on the Stations of the Cross. Mm. And our, the particular Stations of the Cross that are done here in our chapel, which were done through our Institute of Sacred Art, and they are uh, unique, they're gorgeous, and there's uh, a great deal of meaning uh, behind them. Uh, and the idea is to draw you into uh, the experience of walking with Christ right. uh, through uh, the Passion and through the season of Lent. And that will also be available online. But uh, Father Mike has um, uh, also taken to the airwaves, right? Yes. What, what, do, you, what do you offer? Yeah, so I, um, we, we, our parish, St. Pius, uh, we've been last year, and this is our second year, participating in uh, Dynamic Pas uh, Parish Program, which was launched by Dynamic Catholic. Each year there's a different theme. So this year, our second year, is really uh, the theme of prayer, which is great uh, because obviously as a parish community and as individuals, there's nothing more important than our prayer lives and deepening our relationship with the Lord. So I've begun to do a live stream on Monday evenings, uh, and I just call it Monday Meditation. Very creative, right? Yep. But um, uh, And it's basically... Uh, 10, 15 minute uh, reflection on the spiritual life. Uh, and the topics will vary. I just did my first one, but my first one was just simply on encountering Christ in prayer. And then each week I'm gonna talk about a different aspect of the spiritual life. And hopefully my, my goal is to just help people deepen their life of prayer in their encounter with Christ. Uh, Father Michael wrote a, a book about the spiritual life uh, and geared it towards seminarians, uh, which is actually really worthwhile for anybody to read. Uh, is it still in print? It is, yeah. It's, it's, it's entitled Radical Surrender. Uh, it was published by the Institute for Priestly Formation. Uh, and as I said, it was written for seminarians, but uh, there are lo there's, lots of, um, there's, there's lots of content in there that are applicable to anybody right. that uh, uh, you can, I, I, I believe you can still get it on. I think I have, I, I th I have, I think I have uh, one review on Amazon. But it's five stars. <laughs> so, you, was that your um, mother before she I think it was my mom. Yeah, I yeah. think I coaxed my mom into doing it. No. But uh, obviously, it's a very niche market. You know what I mean? So it's not going to be on Oprah's bestseller list or anything. No, but, but uh, uh, people are looking for good quality spiritual mm -hmm. um, uh, writings. And, uh, and I think uh, it's worthwhile, even though you might not be a seminarian. It's worthwhile um, uh, Thank picking you. it up and, and reading it. We hope that uh, this season of Lent will be a time of grace and, and reconciliation, healing, and hope for our nation, for our church, for our communities, and our families and ourselves. So uh, encounter Christ uh, in this journey of Lent by letting go and opening your heart to the power of his word. God bless you, and we'll be talking to you real soon.